Systems with Blanchard System. Systems, welcome to our Duo update. Um, we uh, just to quickly go through the agenda. We're going to give you an overview today of uh, the 2014 Duo, and uh, just going to go over some of the announcements that were made at Duo, and uh, then we'll open up at the end to uh, Q and A. Uh, just a couple of things about go to webinar. Uh, on the uh, on the upper left hand portion of your screen, you'll see a button that you can click, so you get the full screen uh, of all the presentations and demonstrations that are being done. And also that uh, we'll have a Q and A session at the end, but we'll be answering your questions uh, that you submit through the go to meeting control panel. So uh, on the right hand side of your screen, you should have a the go to meeting control panel and there's a place in there for you to enter your questions and then we'll uh, answer them at the end of the webinar today. So I uh, just uh, quickly Gary, thought Gary? Yes. Gary can I answer our point. Uh sure. your slides not changing. I think you're flipping through slides but we're not seeing slides. Okay. If so you want to maybe stop your uh your screen sharing and reshare and uh, see if that fixes it. Okay, thank you Keith. So uh um I think that fixed it. Did it? Uh, I so, see okay. the welcome to do a Okay, good. All right, good. So um so just we thought we'd show you a few slides of uh so you get a feeling of what uh what duo uh was like this year in Washington DC. Uh we had a presentation from Carol Worley, CEO of Dalim. Um these are your officers uh uh and uh, Graham Blanks for Dalim and uh just to point out that we gave Robert Fenikowski, who is outgoing president of Plaque, um, the D Dalim team were in attendance, and they had uh, quite a few announcements, which Fred's going to go over with you. Uh, the Dalim users, we had several Dalim users who had the, gave the opportunity, were given the opportunity to share their experience with the folks in the audience. Uh, we had a panel discussion uh, moderated by David uh, Steinhardt from uh, uh, the Idea Alliance. Uh, David also talked about industry standards. Uh, we had some guest speakers. Uh, we had the all uh, the most important part, Mike's uh, tips and tricks, which everybody looks uh, uh, forward to. Uh, everybody had a chance uh, through breaks to do networking. We had some evening, you know, uh, casual evening uh, uh, events. Uh, we had a welcome reception. Uh, there were certainly lunches where people could get together and share their experiences. Some of the folks uh, had an opportunity to go out and do some sightseeing. And uh, we also had the opportunity to have some fun. And we don't know where this group came from, but they, we believe that they're the royal order of the spoon. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn things over to uh, Fred Padilla, who is going to um, uh, share with you uh, some of the announcements that were made at um, at uh, at Duo. So, Fred, I'm passing things over to you. Thank you, Gary. Hey, everybody. So, what we're going to concentrate on today is uh, Dalim showed us uh, some of the features that are going to be released uh, probably by July of this year. We're calling it the June release um, of ES4. Uh, it may be called uh, ES4.1 but it will be beta by end of June and should be released sometime hopefully in July. Uh, so that's what we're going to concentrate on. Uh, we will be showing some other things in later webinars that we'll be doing through the next couple of months uh, as there are more Twist 7 uh, specific, but there wasn't any releases, any announcements necessarily at Duo that were new to Twist that we hadn't already seen with the Twist 7 information we got at last year's duo and at the Worldwide Technology Meeting. So I'm going to concentrate on some of the new stuff we saw in ES4. So I'm going to go ahead and log into uh, Dalim's ES4.1 in the cloud. And to, it looks pretty much uh, like we're used to seeing, but we have new, some new features uh, throughout the application. So uh, the first thing I'm going to concentrate on is uh, on our file system, um, approach here, we have some raw files. Uh, so they're increasing the 
capability on different raw file formats. Uh, here we have a Canon 1DX format, uh, so we can now accept those. Uh, Nikon D800. And if that shows up quickly. And Nikon D4, uh, just to go through them really quickly. Um, there are several other raw formats supported. Uh, if you have questions about whether it's supported or not, we can test them for you. If you'd like to send us some sample files, we can look through those. Um, obviously, with raw formats, you're wanting to um, get them in Dalim's hands, let them look through it, and make sure that they're working, uh, and make sure they're building in support for those, because all the raw formats are, are very different from each other. Um, some of the other new features we have, uh, kind of DAM-related functions. Uh, Dalim's taken a lot of time in building basically asset management functions inside of EOS. Uh, they want to, you know, since basically the heart of it is kind of an asset management system under the hood anyway. We're tracking assets. We're trying to build more and more of those functions into EOS. So as we see, what we have here is basically just a view of files, and these are actually files we use to be used like to, to pick out the files for our presentation that we did earlier. Um, so we're going through, this is basically looking at a file system on Dalim's server somewhere. Uh, we have kind of the traditional views that we were used to, but you'll notice now is there's new, basically, user action buttons that have been created. Uh, in this case, what they're created to do is basically do a select or reject on images. So we can go through here and quickly say, well, I don't like that image. Uh, maybe I don't like that one. That's a nice image. That's a nice image. Quickly select, reject them, and these are different than an approve reject. What we've done in the past with uh, kind of this file system view is we've built like a dialog approval workflow where you're approving and rejecting files and then through the workflow guiding them different directions. <clears throat> this select and reject is basically just metadata for the files, uh, nothing more than that. So it has no workflow logic, although we could build workflow logic in if we wanted to. It's basically just saying which files we want to keep, which files we don't like, and it can be changed at any time or uh, by anybody that has permission to do that. Also, and they've kind of shown this before, but uh, they're building more and more in with the rating system. So if you look, basically, you have a file that's rated four stars. If I click on four, it'll change it to four stars quickly, so we're able to rate our files very quickly and go through here. You see a lot of these were rated. Uh, with the ratings, what they've done now is allowed us to basically sort by that rating. So if I wanted to look for only images that have five stars rating, I'm able to do that, sort that, and find those quickly. If I'm able to want to look at the ones that have only one star, these are the images that are one star. So quickly, if I wanted to just select all the files that had three stars, I could do that very quickly and select all those if I'm just looking by rating. If I want to look at images that basically been selected or rejected, I can also filter on those now. So I'm able to quickly look at those. Before, in, uh, in ES4, the original release of ES4, basically the only way to view the full screen mode was to scroll all the way up. Now that just behaves normally. So we can scroll and enlarge the images as much as we want. If we want to see them one file at a time, we can go to single page mode. So they've cleaned that up, given us an easier way to get through those, and we can actually just go through here now and thumb through the files. Quickly, again, I still have to select and reject because in my smart view that I've used to create this, that's given me access to that. I'll also be able to do other functions on here, like download the file if I want directly by just clicking there, downloading the file. Uh, viewing the file, if I want to view the file quickly, thumbing through the different files, uh, uploading or actually sharing the file out so I can use the sharing functions of ES and share those out very quickly. Also able to add them to a basket and save those for future use or delete them for, just for organization purposes. What they've built into the 4.1 release also is now a split view. So we're able to view a left and right view of files and quickly, I'm just using my arrow keys to go through them, quickly be able to compare a file left and right. Or if I come back here, go through. So if I'm looking through, and let me get rid of my selection so I can have more files to go through because it actually uses the selection to filter these. 
I'm able to quickly look through, browse through my files, and see if there's a file I like better. Maybe I like the rear view of the White House better than the front view. I'm going to select that one, reject that one. Come through here, find, see if I have another image I like better. So quickly able to go through files, see them, <clears throat> so make your selection or your workflow process on them. Um, there's some new features coming that aren't available in this release yet. Uh, one is to create a contact sheet from my selection, so I can have full selection, create a contact sheet from it. Um, also to download the file with all of its XMP data. That's still to come. It should make it by the beta release, but it's not available in this version yet. You do have all metadata associated with the files that we're used to seeing. Uh, they're actually working on making some of these job tickets that they've shown in demos before uh, that have specific information. Some of these are going to make it where they're normal for files, where they're just part of the application and we don't have to build these every time or you don't have to you know, build it, at least have it as a building block to customize if you want. <clears throat> so this is uh, kind of a sheet that uh, Frederick uses a lot. He always shows this off and shows the rankings, categories, things like that. So for our purposes for our demo here, we're going to go ahead and go through the files we have selected. We have these files selected, and we're going to go ahead and, you know, I could start a project from them, so I could select them and quickly make either a collection or a project directly from my selection, but what I'm going to do is just drag them into an existing project that I already have. Oops, sorry, clicked off of it. So in here I have an images folder. I can take these files, select them, drag them in the images folder. They're immediately added to that project. If I come into the project, I'm able to view that, see the files are now inside of this project in here. So they've been added, they've run through whatever workflow I have set to run through that folder. Uh, and they're ready for me to use for my document here. So now that we're in a document, we have a couple of new features I want to show you all uh, related to dealing with projects and how we kind of deal with files inside of the project. Uh, the first is you'll notice you know, I have a, a project view here. Um, they've changed a little bit of the functionality where for my user, uh, basically milestones I haven't achieved yet are all grayscale. Uh, so you'll see them here with no color. Projects either that I'm at or have achieved are in color. Uh, so kind of just a quick way to be able to look at your project quickly and tell at what milestone or what state it's at. You'll notice a new icon in front of this milestone step. So I'm in a project workflow. I'm at a step called waiting for job instructions. And I have a download up icon basically, uh, sorry, upload up icon. And what that milestone does, it's a new thing in milestones that's called uh, basically like an approval with an upload. So if I come into my milestones themselves, I'll show you what that looks like. So here's my waiting for job instructions milestone. And we have this new function. It must be approved and there's a validation type called an upload on it. So for that upload, I can also select which workflow that uploaded file will go through. So typically this is for, like in this case, I'm waiting for job instructions. It's something that's not a document that's gonna go in my flat plan or my book plan, uh, but it may be job instructions or a PO or anything like that, whatever you can think of obviously in ES and use, use for that. So you direct it through a specific milestone so it's not going through your regular publication milestone that I have in my demo here. You also have a couple of other things in here. One's called a step, um, and the basic the approval is what we used to have up before, where you've got to approve and a reject. The step one instead basically is just an approve. It's just move forward. Um, so a lot of us, uh, I know a lot of my customers use basically these milestone approvals to guide files through the workflow, and really the, the logic of a reject never comes into play. So now we have a step one where you don't have the reject button. It's not as confusing. And then just to show you kind of that functionality, we also have a new view and our smart views that we can use. It's a widget, uh, so they're 
building more and more functionality into the smart views. And what they've done, and bear with me a second because this beta release can sometimes freeze up on these smart views. So let me get this to display real quick. Basically what they've done is built a new s widget for a smart view that gives us a project timeline. Um, so you'll see in a second when it comes up that what we're going to be showing is basically whatever information we want inside of our um, list view here. So in this case, I've got my customer name, project name. That's just customizing how I want to view my, my, um, my smart view. But this widget here now that shows us the document, I mean, the, sorry, the project workflow steps, we can actually interact with at this level. So we can quickly see all of our different projects, which milestones they're at. You'll see here kind of uh, different project workflows as I was starting to build the one for my demo, how they display. You'll see that in gray are milestones that haven't been achieved yet. Um, and then you'll notice basically a little upload icon there. That upload icon represents a file that needs to be uploaded into the project. So if I click on that, choose my file, go look for my file or my file system. So, and I've, in this case, it's just a Word document I'm uploading. I can actually upload that in. It's going to upload, drive through that workflow. And through this, I can also view what that file was. So if I want to view this inside of uh, my soft proofing, I can do that, see what that file is, do my approval reject here. And what that approval or rejection is, is actually approving it at this project level, at this project milestone level. So I can choose my file, approve it, and now it's going to move on in my project timeline. So after this point, it'll go through the next steps of it, and now I'm at production waiting. So quickly seeing where different projects are at, it's a nice view. If I go back to my project itself, oops, and I think I was, so see here's the project I was at. My job instructions is here as a document. It was driven through this Riffle dialog milestone workflow because that's what I had set to go through at that point. And now, basically, I'm going through the normal steps of what we would do inside of a ES workflow. I need to go ahead and download my files, upload those in. Those of you who hadn't seen the HTML upload, uh, this is the HTML uploader that's available since uh, four, um, and we will kind of see that work much nicer than the Java uploader for those of you who haven't played with it. And now we have our files processing through my, in my workflow. They're automatically being put into book plan. And what I'm going to show now, as soon as these are all done, is basically a couple of the new features that they have built into the enrichment part of the application. So for that, I need to go ahead and well, actually, what I'm going to do uh, before I log out, let me go ahead and show you, uh, in, for those of you who haven't seen some of the new HTML5 saw proofing functions uh, in ES4. These have been available for about uh, a month or two now as far as official releases go. Uh, but what they've done is basically added some new functions inside of it. So we have our traditional annotation uh, that we're all kind of used to where we can annotate a file, mark it up. Uh, say in this case, I'm going to actually go to a page I know has a problem. I think I got one in here somewhere. Is that? Yeah. So if I come here, for instance, I can come in here, create an annotation. Again, just like uh, the Java version, this is basically color-coded as I want. So.
So I need to add a picture of Carolyn here. Uh, the, in the annotations, they've added some functionality in, the, in these newer releases. Basically, I'm able to do a reply on an existing annotation. So let's say which one, whatever I need to. Uh, I can also make these an, a check status. So basically, a check status requires somebody to say, OK, I've done that function. Um, so we have those type of things now where we can actually add more notes that are all related to a single note by replying, and you can have as many replies as you want, and also make those you know, checked or unchecked. Um, so a little bit more functionality here. You're also able to filter them. So for those customers that have you know, 50, 100 different annotations on a file, you're able to filter which ones they are. When you hover over, you'll notice it actually highlights where that annotation is on stream. So we now also have our tax extraction built into the HTML5 view. So I'm able to come here, quickly make a note of that. Um, it doesn't have all the functionality of the Java version. So if I make changes, it doesn't necessarily have the marks up, up the way they do in the Java version. But uh, they are working on that. But we're able to extract the text, make a note directly from that, ask for the changes that need to be made. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have our measurement tool in here now. So we're able to measure distances, make sure that logos are appropriate uh, length away from um, trim, able to measure angles on objects if we need to, uh, area, and obviously area kind of free form. So we're able to do all those different measurements and make notes of those if we need to. We're able to view our channels now. So if I need to turn off specific channels, and view my saw proof, I'm, I'm able to do that. Turn off the black, it's a little bit more obvious there. We're also able to see those in black if we want to, if we're viewing a single channel. We have our densitometer tool. Uh, I think it's been there since the first version of the HTML5, but we do have that. Uh, can put that on a certain area of the file. Drop a note directly from that. We see our note here. Modify it if we need to. Uh, revisions, I'll show you in a little bit. I'm going to upload a revision of this file. We'll do it. We're able to do our approvals and rejections here. So I'm able to reject the file, ask for a new revision to be made. And we're also able to do our spread view. So we're able to kind of go through view as spreads and basically view the facing pages as we need to. Uh, and then the scaling is all done. Here, and you can see it is basically dialogue. It's our high-res proof that we're all kind of used to getting in there. Get off that measurement tool so I can actually scroll. Go in and view that high-resolution detail. So again, so I rejected this file. Oops, actually I rejected it twice. Come back in, I've rejected extra files. Um, so I can, just like before, you know, upload our revision. Everybody's used to seeing that this kind of stuff. And if I find my rev here, come in with my revision of my file. Notice in the HTML5 uploader, it does keep a history showing you all the files that you've uploaded. So that's another nice function in there. Now when I come in here, You'll see the revision buttons lit. It shows me how many revisions I've had on this document. Let's me switch between them if I want to, or do a comparison of them. So when I do a comparison, the first mode is basically going to be this analyze mode, where it's going to show, in this case, green, uh, of what changes have been made on the file. I can do my overlay mode, where it's one file on top of another. And again, it's going to flash on and off. Hopefully, that's showing up OK in, uh, in go to webinar. And then I can do my side-by-side -side view as well, where I'm viewing them next to each other and able to view the synchronized views of the files one next to another. So again, it, as time goes, they're building more and more of the functionality of the full Java version of saw proofing into this HTML5 version. If you notice how quickly I've been able to get in and out of uh, this version, it's very nice for speed. Um, right now, it's not for 
uh, color critical users. Uh, although if you do have a calibrated screen and pretty simple, you know, ICC profile type simulation profiles, it suffices for most people. Just if you're highly color critical, it's not would be, would be considered a swap certified solution, and it's not obviously closed loop. So I can get out of that, go in, view my document, and now I'll go into the enrichment and show you a couple of the new things they've added to the enrichment parts of the application. Now when I come in here and I launch my soft proofing now, I'm going to be in the Java version. Uh, Dalim's controlling whether you're Java or HTML5 via your uh, user profile, basically. This production manager profile is still Java, where my administrator uh, profile is HTML5. Uh, there is an SER out there, uh, for those of you who would ask, uh, to make that basically selectable once I'm in the, in the application so I don't have to change profiles to do this. Um, so once we're in the Java version, we have a couple of new enrichment functions. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on enriching this, but just wanted to show you all a couple of things. Uh, one is the ability to take in, actually, let me delete that. I can take basically icons or different elements that I have and use those and put basically links on top of them. So for instance, if I download this little download icon here, I can put it on my file somewhere. And then on top of it, basically create a link. So I'm creating a graphic, creating a link by that graphic. And I'm going to make this one invisible. And on this, basically I'm going to say, open a resource and that resource is going to be basically this uh, magazine but just a full page version of it whatever the resource it could be so I'm adding it in here it's part of my project but I'm saying when this link is clicked open up this resource For instance, we still have our traditional basically open URL so I can come in here open up a URL that way and then a couple other things that I'll show you all on some different pages so in this page again we can take the images that we dragged into this project drag them on here and we have a creating our traditional slideshow this way but what I'm going to do as well next to that slideshow is create another little basically point where I'm able to say okay well if I click on this guy here, I'm going to go full screen. So we'll change our background color and make this invisible. And what we have now is basically say on click. So on click is basically an action that if I click this, it'll change the behavior of one of the elements on the page. In this case, it's going to be my slideshow one. And what I'm going to do is basically toggle it to full screen. So if I click that button, it'll make this slideshow full screen. And then they did just a quick little enhancement on creating a table of contents. Uh, before, basically, you had to link all the pages yourself. But if you have a text-based um, table of contents already in your document like this one and the pagination is correct, what we can do now is simply, I'm basically, I'm left-clicking on the message from the deck here and then right-clicking on the O5 that will automatically add the O5 to my table of contents here and create the link. So just quickly I'm going through here and making the link to all of these pages. And I'm done with my table of contents. And then just to use one more of the on-click functions, I'm able to come in here and let's say I wanted to add a video. So I'm going to add a video on here. I'm actually going to hide this video and create a little icon for use for
for my play functions here. So I'll take my little play Godzilla over here again. Give them no background. So I can change those functions of it. And then on top of him, I'm just going to add another element. Say on click. And this time what I'm going to do is take my Godzilla video and toggle visibility on it. Uh, so just quickly going through, creating those very quickly. I've gone through here, I've gotten that, and I can always view the virtual book inside of ES itself before I ever create them. Uh, they've added kind of a new look and feel to the HTML5 they build here. Uh, here's basically my download link, so I'm able to click that. It's downloading that uh, magazine. Click on this. It's opening up now. Instead of opening up in a separate window on your browser, it'll actually open up inside of ES itself. So there's my link to Apple. Click back. I'm back to my publication. So my slideshow is going to load up here in a second. So here's my slideshow. Go full screen on it. And you can see it's still an active slideshow. I have my table of contents built here, so I'm able to look at that. Quickly go to one of the pages if I want. You'll see it right now. There's no video shown. If I click on my play icon, there's my video. Play the video inside of the browser. Uh, there, Dalim is working. There's been a couple of questions we've had uh, recently shown that the HTML5 version does give a couple of browsers a little bit of issue, um, as well as it doesn't play correctly on an iPad. That is something that isn't available yet in this basically alpha version of, of ES4.1, but will be in the next few weeks before the actual beta release. They're rebuilding basically the structure of the HTML5 um, that gets built in, in the digital editions. So there's our approval. We can go through, look at those, and actually I need to let me go ahead and upload new revisions of uh, 6 and 7 since I accidentally rejected those. And I'll show you all the next thing so we can wrap up really quickly. So we'll come in, let those come in really quickly. All right. So there's our files. We're going to go ahead and approve all of those. Say so we we're happy with what we got. We could have approved them actually in the view we had before. Once I approve them, they're going to go through to production done from a project standpoint, create digital edition. And just like I was interacting with my milestone view, um, my milestone bar and my smart view, I also have this ability. So this is what I was talking about, which this is just a step um, milestone. So no approve or reject like we're used to seeing. It's just strictly, okay, go forward, go ahead, and basically create my digital editions. Uh, one thing I want to show real quickly, I know I'm kind of running short on time here. Uh, so our digital editions are being created. If I go back to my milestone view, there's a new function in milestone uh, in our workflow, basically, that allows us to set basically the order of the files that we're uh, putting in. So if you notice on this project on demo two, the order of these icons in the project workflow really doesn't make sense. So we're kind of create digital edition, uh, generate HTML5, generate EPUB, generate, and then these. On the newer version of my workflow, I actually ordered them. So by changing the order of the workflow, of the milestones basically, by it just adding the parameters of the milestone itself in the workflow, I can put these in the order that I want. So what I have is a split going three ways in the workflow. And sometimes it doesn't display the way we want them to. We now have the ability to control the order they display in, in this list. Um, last thing I want to touch on really quickly is also a new function that's in the smart views where basically I'm now able to take these projects and publish these out to Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Google Plus, any of those social media things. And basically, I can just click here, click on 
a little icon there, and then share the link out to my Facebook page. So you notice it's ES4. Since this is actually going to go to mine, share the link. And I'm just basically creating a shared link to the HTML5 book of this. Uh, in this case. So I can create it, share it out very quickly via social media. So I think uh, I need to wrap up now. So I'm going to turn this back over to Gary uh, and they can kind of go through the questions if anybody had questions. And if you have anything else you want to ask, you're also free to email us. We'll be happy to answer those for you. Gary? Hello, Gary? Or Keith, one of y'all? It looks like he's muted. Uh, also, would okay. like to mention uh, at the end, we we're, we have a, the the, duo, the tips and tricks have been so popular. The, just to let you know that uh, uh, maybe Fred, if you can click on the events page, we have an events page now. We'll actually have four webinars every month, uh, and we're going to be focusing on tips and tricks. And uh, one of those sessions, uh, we'll be focusing on the Dalian tips and tricks. Uh, the next one that's coming up will actually be Wednesday, June 11th at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we will be sending out information on uh, on that upcoming uh, tips and tricks. So uh, uh, look for some communications coming out. Uh, we'll uh, we'll play some time trying to uh, stump uh, Mike Moscato and Fred on uh, on topics. But if uh, you do you do go to our website and tip on, click on the Darlene tips and tricks coming up. You'll see the the agenda is already listed for the next session coming up on the 11th. So feel free to click on the registration page and let us know you want to attend. Uh, anyway, so if you have any questions, uh, it's not too late. You can go ahead and uh, type them into the questions field. Uh, so I'll start reading a couple of these off. Uh, I have one uh, that just came in. Uh, is order of milestones for projects and documents workflows? Yes, uh, that, that would work for both. Okay. Um, another question. Will the HTML tool have all of the functionality that the Java dialog currently has? Uh, eventually, they're hoping to. The one they're really not positive about would be the closed loop calibration because that is a Java library they use for that. But they are researching mm -hmm. it, looking in ways to either find HTML5 libraries or work around that. How oh, funny that Art just sent in that question. Any future plans to support closed loop color for HTML5 viewer? Uh, there are no plans, I guess, at this time, right? Uh, there, they want to be able to build it in, but they don't know how they're going to do that yet. At least that's okay. the latest I got. I don't know if Graham would have had more information, but he couldn't be on the call today. All right, and Art, we'll uh, we'll dig a little deeper into that and follow back with you if we've got any update on when uh, that feature is uh, going to become available. Uh, another question about uh, can ES connect to a Zynet file system? Yeah, web native file system is basically just going to be files you know, that are on your file system, and basically that's mainly what ES is doing that file system view for is to you know, view you know, asset management software that uh, relies on the file system. You can point it to that, and it'll read that in. So essentially, it's not just Zynet. It'll actually connect to any current file system, to folder structure. Any, anything, any, stru anything. any structured file system or you know, any files laying down. Obviously, the, the more structured, the better. But OK. Uh, let's see. We have a quick question on uh, can ES annotate video files? Yes, actually, probably should have shown that. But if I go back into my project, and oops, sorry, into my project here, and I think my video was here. No. Nope. So if we go into our videos here. Basically, what they have is an HTML5-based um, annotation tool. So on a timeline, we can view this video. It's still loading up here. So I can come through here, draw on the timeline, play my video if I want. If I need to create an annotation on that, and let me hide this webinar window there, I can drag an annotation onto that. 
but would have a notice that note gets created on the timeline and I can actually expand it out so as long as I want it to last for it'll actually stay on there so now you see as it comes through here finishes annotations gone when I can manage those I can delete those and view them more hot you know hide them more see them <coughs> All right, great. Uh, glad uh, somebody asked that question. Uh, let's see. Um, we're running out of time here, but we do have time for one last question. Uh, is there a list of what HTML features will be released by date? Uh, we don't have that list yet, but we can ask Dalim if they do have one. It's uh, certainly something that we should request. Maybe we could uh, also add that uh, that item to this upcoming uh, tips and tricks that we're going to have on June 11th. So hopefully uh, you guys will come back. And uh, as always with the, uh, the webinars that we've scheduled uh, monthly, uh, if you guys have any idea uh, for a topic or something that you would like to see explained in more detail, feel free to ping us with an email and uh, we'll add that to the agenda. But... Uh, I think uh, we're right at 45 minutes, which we've uh, tried to keep uh, all of the presentations to. There are a few questions that we didn't get to today, so uh, we did capture all the questions. So we will uh, circle back with you and either uh, send you an email to answer your question, or if you want to take some time to have a quick call, we can do a deeper dive into your question. So uh, we'd certainly like to thank everybody for attending today and uh, give us some feedback. Let us know uh, how the presentation was today. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.